Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, I have this new cordless e-file by Methody Susie. It's the Retina Cordless and Nail Trio. I am so excited to try this product out. Thank you guys so much at Methody Susie for this wonderful gift. I appreciate it so much. Let's go ahead and look at the box first. So the box does have um, some pretty roses on it. I'm such a huge fan of roses and I love roses so, so much. And I just think the box is so cute. Let's go ahead and just open it up and see what's inside. So here's what we have first. We have their user manual and here we have the index where it shows basically what's included in the user manual. It does also show you which bits are included in the kit, which is great. And it shows you how to use them as well. So here's how the EFA looks. It includes 20 pieces of sanding bands that are 180 grits. The EFA is 28,000 RPMs as well. It has a USB plug here, which is rechargeable. Like I said, it is cordless, so you just have to charge it for up to two hours, and it lasts four hours on working time or running time. They also include this medium grit large barrel ceramic pit. Great for removing any, you know, bulking or also removing the nails, you know. So here they also include six bits here, and they actually don't look like the normal, you know, cheap bits that come in the usual e-files. These actually look to be very great quality. I'm going to go ahead and open this up real quick. So here's how they look. Most of these look like they would actually be great for cuticle work and all that. Unfortunately, I won't be using them just because I don't really have anything to clean up as you guys can see here. It does also include the mandrel bit for the sanding bands. And some extra sanding bands here which are basically 26 sanding bands in total. Lastly, we have the e-file here, which is super pretty. Like I mentioned, it is 28,000 RPMs. It has a little bit here. Here's how it looks. We're just going to go ahead and turn the arrow to unlock it first. And we're just going to go ahead and remove that bit. And then we can go ahead and install the other bit we want. So to turn it on, actually, I'm going to go ahead and just place this back here. I'm going to show you guys how it works first. Go ahead and turn it on. I'm going to go ahead and just press it and hold down for two seconds. Immediately we have the little light here that basically shows that it is on. Here we are able to adjust the speeds. It has three speeds. The first one is 15,000 RPMs. This is how loud it sounds at 15,000 RPMs. The second one is 25,000 RPMs. And lastly, we have 28,000 RPMs, which is basically the most that it can go at. Here we can go ahead and change the speed to forward and reverse. Okay, so this is in reverse motion. And this is in forward motion. And back here is where you basically go ahead and plug it in and charge it for two hours to get it fully charged and then you're able to use it for up to four hours. I actually like that it already comes charged. Super neat. And it is actually pretty long compared to the e that I actually currently have. Go ahead and compare this e to this one and we're going to go ahead and see the difference. So I can already tell right away by just looking at it that this one is way more slimmer than the one I have here. Just look at the difference. This one also is way longer. Here you guys can see kind of how it kind of would work. 
super long and then this one is just like this it's not that long either um, but basically yeah this is how it looks and I'm gonna go ahead and be demonstrating me placing a bit in here I think I'm actually gonna be using one of these I'm gonna use this one here so I'm gonna just go ahead and insert this bit here then I'm gonna go ahead and click to the right to go ahead and lock it into place once we hear that click then it's basically ready to go ahead and use now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on Once it's been turned on, I'm going to go ahead and place it at 15,000 RPMs. And let's go ahead and test it out. Now I'm going to go ahead and be going into the set that I will be making. Then after that, I'm going to go ahead and be using this ephra and see how it works for today's set. And then I'll leave my thoughts and everything in the end of the video. So for today's video, I'm going to go ahead and be using forms. I already have part one up of my um, video with Pajo with forms. That video is going to be more in-depth and it has way more tips than this video was. So I recommend you guys go ahead and check that video out. So here I'm going to go ahead and start by removing my form from the little sticker here for the paper once we have that done we're gonna go ahead and remove this back end sticker and place it on the back end here to go ahead and add more strength to the form once we've done that we're gonna go ahead and be using our fingers to kind of wiggle the form around to add more flexibility to the form once we've done that we're gonna go ahead and just pinch these two ends here first Once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and also continue doing that to the second end there. Now we have that done, we're going to go ahead and just insert this under our natural nail first. We're just going to first make sure that it's very snug fit. If it isn't, we're just going to go ahead and adjust it. As you guys can see here, it's still not snug fit. So here I'm going ahead and going in and making sure that, you know, it's very well placed under my natural nail. Now that we have that done, I'm going to go ahead and just close the last end there. Then I'm going to go ahead and pinch the free edge here to go ahead and narrow the sides inward. Just because we're going to go ahead and be creating a stiletto shape. Here's how it looks. And here I'm going to go and let you guys enjoy watching this part here. So here I'm going to go ahead and pour 70% alcohol into my dappin dish. Then I'm going to go ahead and be using the clear by the brand Rosalind. As I mentioned in my previous video, when we're working with colors that are more saturated or pigmented, the light won't pass through so it will not cure. So the way we can fix that or you know help um, avoid that is by going in with a clear layer as I'm going to do here. Here's how it looks and I'm just going to go ahead and start by placing some of the podjo onto my natural nail first. As I mentioned, this layer has to be very, very thin. It doesn't have to be very thick, otherwise, you know, the nail's gonna come out too thick. 
So here I'm just going ahead and making sure that I cover my natural nail. Here I had excess amount of poly gel, so I went ahead and removed that and placed that on my other nail. Okay, as you can see, I'm removing the excess. I'm going to go ahead and just, instead of wasting it, I'm going to go ahead and place it on my other nail. Just like so. Then I'm going to go ahead and continue working on my nail here. Like I said, I'm first going ahead and making sure that I cover my natural nail first. But I'm also going ahead and dragging or pulling the poly gel towards the free edge to get as much access as I can. Here you can see I'm still covering my natural nail first. I'm going to go ahead and continue doing that. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and pull that excess poly gel towards the free edge to get as much access as I can. To create that very thin layer of um, poly gel. Here I'm pulling and I can tell that I don't have a lot of access because not a lot is coming towards the free edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and grab a little bit more poly gel and place it on the free edge. Once I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and push the poly gel backwards with the other poly gel that I had to go ahead and just blend that in. And now I'm going to go ahead and start by making my shape. Using the side of my brush, I'm going to go ahead and be using that to go ahead and sculpt out the stiletto shape. Here I'm patting it into place and again I'm using my side again to go ahead and create that stiletto shape. Using the side of my brush honestly is a very great thing because it helps create the shape so much better and it just creates a neater shape you know. And it also helps with filing. The better you have your application you know the less filing you have to do. Again I'm cleaning up my side just like this. Then I'm going to go ahead and just pat pat pat. Once I'm done with that then I go ahead and cure. As I mentioned, this is a very thin layer. So here I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how the sort of profile looks. As you can see, it's a very thin layer. Super thin. Here's how it looks. And here's the front of the nail. Now I went ahead and cured that for 60 seconds. And next I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys enjoy watching the process all over again, but without me explaining it. So here I wanted to go ahead and show you guys these clear forms. If you guys don't want to do that step, then I definitely recommend purchasing these. These look really, really pretty. And so here I'm going to go ahead and now show you guys that I went ahead and basically did that to every single nail. I went ahead and created that thin layer. And now we're just going to go ahead and pop these off now. Not really pop them off, basically remove them. But yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and continue removing each and every single one of them. And as you can see, that cellar shape is super crisp. I absolutely love it. Using that side of our brush definitely helped keep my shape, you know. Just look how beautiful that looks. I did struggle taking off the pinky, so I did go ahead and just do that off camera. I always have trouble doing my application with my pinky on camera or just doing anything with my pinky in general, you know. Um, but basically, this is how they all look. Just look at how that shape looks. I'm going to go in with 70% alcohol and we're just going to go ahead and remove that tacky layer. Make sure you wipe that tacky layer down. Otherwise, you know, when we apply our second layer of poly gel, it will create little bubbles. I noticed that because while I was doing this design, I actually went ahead and practiced several designs to figure out which design I wanted to do. And I noticed that if I didn't wipe, it would create bubbles. Here I'm using the color SY07 by the, by the brand Savaland. Here I'm just going in and applying a very thin layer and this one I did fast forward it just because there's not really much to explain here. All I'm doing is basically doing a very thin layer of this color here. 
it's not as pigmented that is the reason i used it it's because i really just wanted a very translucent jelly um color here so i did go ahead and just apply a very thin layer then i went ahead and cured for 60 seconds so every single nail i went ahead and did the exact same thing i didn't really show the process for every single nail because i realized it might be boring you know watching the same thing over and over again but yeah basically i went ahead and did that thin layer for each and every single nail So here's how the nails now look. I am in love with the jelly-like effect. I think it looks really, really gorgeous. I actually was thinking, hmm, maybe I should do another design because I just really like the jelly-like effect. Um, but anywho, we're going to go in with some 70% alcohol, a limp wipe, and we're just going to go ahead and remove that tacky layer. Just like so. Once we're done with that, I'm going to go ahead and be showing you guys the gel polishes that I will be using. I'm going to be using the color Friday Night and the color Freedom by Nail Addict. And the color Just Black by XXC. I'm not too sure if I saw the gel polishes still, but any um, gel polish should work fine. And so here's how the colors look on top. And I'm going to go ahead and start by placing some of the color Friday Night, just like so. We do need a good amount. Then I'm going to go ahead and go in with the color Freedom by Now Addict. And lastly, we're going to go ahead and just use the color Just Black by XXC. So I did go ahead and just place that gel polish randomly all over the entire nail and now I'm going to go ahead and go in with this dry flat brush. I'm not going to be using any alcohol to go ahead and just marble the colors, just the flat brush itself. Here I'm going ahead and just swirling the colors around, mixing them together and making sure that the full nail is covered with the colors. So here's my first layer, now I'm going to go in with my second layer, I'm going to go in and apply some of the color freedom first, then some of the color um, Friday night. Just like so. I wanted more color actually, so that's why I went in with that second layer, and also because some of the colors um, wasn't really on there, especially on the side, as you guys can see there. So here I'm just going to go ahead and continue mixing the colors around, just like so, and then cure for 60 seconds. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you two different methods to apply the modern flakes. The first one I'm going to go ahead and be using Bail the by the brand Rosaline. As you guys can see it is very thick and the way I actually apply it is by first um, brushing it like if I'm brushing or polishing the nail using gel polish. That is how I'm going ahead and be using it for today's video or for this step actually. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue brushing it, make sure that I fully cover the entire nail and without curing as well. So here are the Myler Flakes that I'm going to go ahead and be using. These are iridescent and the other ones I actually got them off of AliExpress. 
and you guys can see they're really really pretty i'm gonna be using a silicone pen here to go ahead and just place them onto the nail as i mentioned i did not cure this builder gel layer i'm just gonna go ahead and just place them onto the nail once i have the full nail covered with the mylar flakes then i'm gonna go ahead and then cure for 60 seconds So this is how the nail looks after it's been fully covered with the mylar flakes. Now we're going to go ahead and do a full cure for 60 seconds. Now let's go ahead and go on to the second method. So for this method, I'm going to go ahead and just be using a small amount of polygel. It's very important we're just using a small amount. Otherwise, if you use too much, the layer is going to become too bulky. We already also have to encapsulate and when encapsulating, you know, we do have to use more of a layer just because we have to make sure that none of the mylar flakes, you know, are popping up. So that is why it's important to just use a very thin layer of polygel. So once we have our thin layer down, we're just going to go ahead and go right into applying the mylar flakes through the entire nail. Once the nail is fully covered with the mylar flakes, we're just going to go ahead and go right into doing a full cure for 60 seconds, then encapsulating our design. So here's how the nails look once we've applied the mylar flakes and cured. Now let's go ahead and apply that to the rest of the nails. And now once they've been applied, this is how the rest of the nails look. Now all we have to do is now go ahead and just encapsulate the nails. So to encapsulate this nail, I'm just going to go ahead and be going in with my Rosaline Builder Gel that I used previously to adhere the mylar flakes. So to encapsulate the mylar flakes, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that I go ahead and do a very thin layer through the entire nail, making sure that I'm just using the brush itself. And I'm just going to brush it around the entire surface of the nail. Some of the mylar flakes will stick up so what we do to go ahead and make sure that we actually encapsulate that is I'm actually going to go ahead and be doing very slight motions across that um, spot specifically. Especially right here at the top right here where I'm basically spending most of my time applying some of that pilcher is where I noticed that some of the mylar flakes were sticking up so this is what I'm doing. Here's where I'm actually building the apex just like so and once we have our apex down and all that then I go ahead and did a full cure for 60 seconds before curing I'm gonna put my finger down in a 45 degree angle to let the um, builder gel level out itself to create the apex itself then I went ahead and actually cured now here again I want to mention that some of the mylar flakes were sticking up so I did go in with an extra layer I'm also using the extra layer to go ahead and build that apex once I have that done then I'm gonna go ahead and do another cure for 60 seconds Now I'm going ahead and applying some poly gel straight down just like so. Remember to always apply it a little bit away from the cuticle area so you can work your way back just because we want the cuticle area to be the thinnest part of the nail. So here I'm just pushing it back, pushing it towards the side, just making sure that I fully encapsulate the entire nail. Once I have that done, then I'm going to go ahead and do a full cure of 60 seconds. So here's how the rest of the nails look once I fully encapsulated them. I think they look stunning. They look gorgeous. I'm living for that iridescent look. This set was definitely more my style. I really wanted to keep these on a longer. I was hoping they didn't pop off, but eventually they popped off after like three days or so. I actually ended up popping them off myself, but I really liked how these look and I definitely want to go ahead and recreate this set all over again just because I really liked how they look. So let's just go ahead and go right into filing, e-filing, all that good stuff. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and first use 70% alcohol to go ahead and remove the tacky layer that the builder gel and poly gel leaves. Making sure that I scrub that off very well, otherwise it's just going to gunk up our bits and our files.
Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and start by filing now. So I'm gonna go ahead and first place my hand file diagonally across the nail, just because this is in a stiletto shape. I'm just gonna go ahead and crisp up our shape a little bit more. So you guys can hear my little sister, she's right here with me at the moment. Usually, most of the time that I'm filming, she's always going to be with me. She usually sleeps around this time, but like, I've been actually going to sleep and waking up around 11. And so she's, she's very active right now. I'm going to go ahead and now file the underside. Especially right here because you guys can kind of see that this is going downward so we're going to go ahead and straighten that up by just filing the underside. I'm going to use my 100 side. And just like that, that has not been fixed. Sorry, I didn't focus. That is how it looks now. So now that I've bought the sidewalks for each nail, I'm going to go ahead and go in with this extra fine umbrella bit. And I'm going to go ahead and just turn on my file by going ahead and pressing and holding it for two seconds. Once it's on, it shows a green light. And here I'm going to go ahead and turn it to the second speed. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn it to the first one. The first one is 15,000 RPMs, as I mentioned. The second one is... 25,000 and the last one is 28,000 and it right now is in forward motion and we don't really need to remove a lot of bulk which is great I'm only going to go ahead and start by going at the free edge first I absolutely love this e file. It doesn't skip, you know, I have no problems with it at the moment. It honestly is a very, very useful and I absolutely am loving it. I'm gonna go ahead and now start by the cuticle area and the sidewalls first. I'm gonna go around it first. I'm gonna go ahead and continue working my way around the nail first, the cuticle area. And I'm going to go ahead and slightly start by, I'm not really going to remove any bulk as I mentioned, I don't really have much to remove. So I'm just going to go ahead and feather this lightly across the nail. I'm not adding any pressure to my e-file. I'm just going to go ahead and go lightly over just like so. I'm just letting my e-file do the work for me. Very lightly across the entire nail. If you guys hear my little sister crying, she's scared of the noise that the ephod makes. So she's kind of like bothered by it. And again, I'm going to go lightly over feathering motion. I also did not turn my nail dust collector on just so you guys are able to just listen to how loud this e-file is. And that is basically for filing.
and just look at how that shape looks I am so happy with how this turns out now I'm gonna go ahead and go over the entire nail again this one I my apex is kind of correct but right about here is where I got too much bulk so I'm always gonna go ahead and start by here if I look like for example this one here seems to be okay I'm not gonna go ahead and actually be filing here I'm only gonna be filing right about here only here as well the apex seems correct the only part that I need to file is probably the free adjust you guys can see this bump here this is what we're gonna have to file off and so here I'm starting at the free edge first this time when I since I do have bulk here I'm actually gonna go ahead and actually add a little bit more pressure to my um, bits here Okay, so I do not want to make this video too long, so I'm going to go ahead and just stop there and continue my filing off camera. But overall, I actually really like the hand file. super convenient to use, especially since I film. My cord is all the way over there for my other one that I use, and I think this one's definitely going to be way better to use, you know? Because sometimes I do get off camera because my cord can't reach or any of that, you know? But this one honestly makes everything work so much better. 
it's actually not too like while I was working with it I don't really you know feel it as heavy as I thought it would compared to my other one this one is a little bit more heavier but I noticed that you know it's not too heavy to the point where I notice a difference when hand filing I mean when e-filing um, but overall I really really like it I highly recommend you guys try it out and it just I think it's gonna make everything so much better especially because it's rechargeable you know I have like tons of cords here on my desk and I want to kind of you know get new products that are you know cordless because it just makes everything look much cleaner and neater and I think this is definitely gonna help that out um but yeah overall like I said I really like it low vibration as well I noticed that right away super compact as well and very easy to use and the speeds honestly each of them is very helpful for example the first speed I think would be great for prepping the second one like I said debulking and the last one is basically going to be great for removal which I might be doing a video on removal because I did do a peel off base cut on this set but I honestly feel like this set might not even pop off because it's not even popping off at all I tried it earlier because on this now I accidentally messed up you can't probably tell why I messed up but I thought I messed up but I didn't really mess up but I tried peeling it off and I wasn't I wasn't able to actually pop it off these actually seem like they might pop off but this one it was impossible so I might be doing a removal video I'm not too sure I'll see if I can remove these right away, if I can't, then I will be doing a removal video. But like I said, I really like it. Here's how everything looks so far. And I do want to show you guys how much the bit can go higher. Especially because when you're doing long nails, the bit has to be a little bit more higher up. And I'm going to go ahead and test that out. Let's go ahead and... Okay, so yes. So the bit, yeah, you're able to put it pretty high. Just look at the length of the nail that I have here. It is pretty lengthy, so when working with longer nails, make sure you have your bit a bit higher. A bit lower, of course, if you're doing short nails, or if you're wearing at the keto clear, then definitely, you know, make it shorter. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go off camera and then give you guys my last final thoughts. So after filing, this is how the nails look. I'm going to go ahead and go in with a little bit of a liner brush and just a mix of the gel polishes that I used previously because I accidentally filed some of the color off and we can go ahead and just fix that really quick, you know. Um, I guess I didn't do a very good job encapsulating. I was like half asleep while doing this set. But here I'm just grabbing a little bit of that color and all we're going to do is just go ahead and fill that gap in there. There is poly gel on there. I just didn't encapsulate the gel polish very well. Um, but yeah, that's all I'm going to go ahead and do. And just fixing this just helped the nail set look overall very better and neater. Um, but yeah, hopefully this tips helped you guys. Sometimes, you know, I might fall it off. I might do like a little mistake here and there. And I'm happy to let you guys know a way to help um, fix that issue there. But yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that I um, fill that in. And once I'm done with that, once you top coat it, it's literally unnoticeable. So yeah. So after filling the little gap in there, I went ahead and now applied some top coat and care for 60 seconds. I also do want to mention that while I was gone for a while, honestly, didn't mean to be. As many of you guys know, people just started school. My brother goes to school and my sister goes to school. Unfortunately, my brother did come into contact with somebody who had COVID. So he got it, you know, it was really rough. And I was scared of getting sick, so I did wear a mask. Um, after that, my sister actually got sick as well. She actually shares rooms with me, so I was really scared because I was like, I don't want to get sick. Because once I get sick, um, you guys won't be hearing from me for quite a while because I don't have the best immune system. Uh, but how do you call it? Yeah, she got sick, so I wasn't able to do my voiceover just because, you know, if I, I tried to do it, but I sounded muffled with my mask on. So I just waited, you know, for them to get better so I can finish um, this voiceover and give you guys the best quality um, audio. But yeah, that's basically what happened after she got sick. Then my little baby sister as well, she got sick. For her, it was rough for the first three days. But after that, she was okay. She's fine. Everybody's fine now. So that is why I'm doing the voiceover. Um, but yeah, that's basically all that happened. I'm very thankful you know, that I didn't get sick. Um, but yeah, that's basically all. Here, I did go ahead and went in and applied some cuticle oil. And this is how the set turned out. So now I'm going to go ahead and give you guys my final thoughts about the Atena Cordless e-file. I honestly really loved it. I think it's super handy, super easy to use as well. And it basically has the speeds and everything for um, e-filing, you know, for prep, for removal, for debulking, just the speeds are perfect. 
At the beginning, I did notice it was a little bit more heavier than the one I previously used. But once I actually got to using it, I honestly didn't really notice a difference at all. Honestly, it works really amazing. For the price as well, I think the price point is super great. I also do have a discount code that you guys are able to use. I will be leaving a link down below to the e-file and also my discount code in the description. I honestly really loved it and I highly recommend you guys try it out. If you guys have any questions or anything like that about the e-file, then definitely let me know down below in the comment section. Also, thank you guys again for watching today's video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed today's set and I'll see you guys at my next one. Goodbye.